This is the Busby Rail Raider, or as it's known in other countries, the Air Warriors Monorail. Uh, it's a really nice shotgun looking up and the functionality is pretty much the same, which is why I got it. It fits six rounds in this uh, horizontal magazine. You load in with this, and of course, like all good shotguns, you cock it and then you can put an extra shell in, in there. And it fires actually really well. Now, I've heard loads of people say that they find got stoppages with it. My one, I've not had a single stoppage. Granted, I've only had it a couple of days, but so far it's worked out really well. So I've decided I'm gonna pimp this gun. Right, I've purchased a, a spring, <laughs> an upgraded spring, uh, I'm trying to get it in there, and I wanna do a paint job on there. But I wanna do a special type of paint job. But first off, really what I need to do is disassemble this. Now the trouble with it is, uh, this end cap is glued on, and so that makes it really difficult to disassemble the weapon system. So, I'm gonna try and loosen up that glue with a little bit of hot water. So, I found a suitable uh, vase that should fit the uh, rail raider nicely. Just gonna pour in a little bit of hot water up to what I think is roughly the, appro the appropriate height. And hopefully, it should just fit in, and it's just the, uh, just that muzzle poking into the water. And I'm gonna leave that for a few minutes, just to see if that loosens up some of that plastic. Wish me luck, guys. Okay, so I've been disassembling the rail radar. I managed to get the top cover off. It was glued in just a few places, but just uh, scoring it with a scalpel, managed to loosen it off. Taking off the handguard, which came in these three sections. Um, I think I'm going to keep these two grey bits in grey, and I'm going to maybe do like a, uh, a vinyl wrap of the orange piece. Um, these two sections that go into the, the pistol grip been removed. Uh, this bit just goes into the the loading device. Uh, this I don't know, rear rear sight, I guess. Unfortunately, the big problem is I failed so far to get this orange muzzle off. And unfortunately, as you can see, the whole whole weapon system in order to it's kind of, re I'm relying on getting that piece off in order to totally separate the two halves, which is a shame. Um, I'm at a loss of what to do, really, if I'm honest. Um, I tried getting my scalpel and just going around the edges, but I think it must be must be glued here somewhere because I just can't seem to scrape it off. Anyhow, I'm gonna I'm gonna persevere. I'm gonna keep working. Uh, whilst I've been disassembling this weapon, I came across the spring, and this is the spring. And as you see, do you know what? It's not actually that bad a spring. It's quite good. However, I had in my possession this uh, long shot spring. And as you see, it's quite a bit bigger. However, upon inspection into this this chamber, it does actually fit into there. Hold on, more time. Just... Where's it in? It fits perfectly. So, um, boom! We're going to be putting some extra power into this. Okay, just for those interested, this is what the horizontal magazine looks like and the, the 
plunger tube assembly. As you can see, there's an air restrictor in there. Um, but, um, yeah, mine's a bit damp at the moment because I'm an idiot and I thought that I could steam uh, the weapon apart, but hopefully that'll dry up of its own accord. Okay, so <laughs> I've managed to separate the, um, the main parts of the body completely and I can now see why I was never ever gonna get that muzzle off because it is in fact uh, plastic welded on the inside. So guys, that is that is not coming off. Even now that I have it separated, that's that's staying there. Okay, so now I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna try putting it all back together with the larger spring before I take it to pieces again <laughs> and paint it up. Or should I just paint it up? And then try putting it back together. I don't know. I'm I need to think. I need to sleep. Okay, I've managed to get the shell halves separated and the cap off, although I have unfortunately bent the cap slightly, but I'm sure that can be rectified. But so this is what it looks like. Oh I need to work out what that spring <laughs> goes to, I think it went, I think it connect, sorry, get my hand out of the way, I think this spring connected to that part there, looks about right, yeah, as you can see, it's really, really complicated, so, unless you're, oh, and this is the Hensher spring, replacing the much skinnier one that I put in. Unless you're a top notch modder, I wouldn't recommend having a go at the internals on this one. It's a bitch. Okay, so I've come across a slight hitch. This is the spring that it came with, and this is the um, dart blaster modification spring that's meant for a, a long shot, but I bought to replace it. And it, it fits in that tube perfectly, and it goes over, it goes over this end of the spring mechanism, as you see. But the trouble is, as it's in there, it catches on this. And now you can say, oh, I'll just cut it down. But I'm a little concerned, and also, this plastic, Shotgun, I don't think it's quite sturdy enough to take that spring to be honest. So I've got this spring, I think it came from one of the Nerf Mega 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 Magnuses. So this well that's this spring. Obviously it's it's about a third longer than that one, roughly the same diameter and strength, but it will actually catch there. So I think I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that instead, put it back together, see how well it works. So this part of the grip that's bright orange, I wanna wrap with this um, wood effect vinyl wrap. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is just sort of roughly gauge how much I need of it. And just, Cut it out. Peel off the backing. Lay it on. Okay, and obviously that looks a bit ugly right now. But what I'm gonna do is take, you know, I've just got an ordinary hairdryer. You can get a specialist bits of equipment and I'm just going to heat it up and it, and when I heat it that should, it should this will 
uh, sort of form itself to this shape and it'll be a lot neater. But actually, before I do that, I'm just going to trim around these edges. So I want a little bit of overhang, um, but not too much. Okay, so here's the finished uh, wood effect pump grip. You can see there's a couple of creases where it didn't quite take properly and get it, but that's not important really. And the good thing is, it, you know, it, it won't catch on hands. It probably <laughs> gives the grip actually, the pump grip, less uh, purchase for the hand now because it's a bit smoother. But it really looks nice. I like that look. I think that. Um, I think that looks quite professional and tidy. Right, so this is the top section of this uh, shotgun blaster. As you can see, looking closely, I've given it a light sanding, and then rinsed out in um, that hot soapy water, let it dry, and then masked off the areas that I don't want paint on primarily the bits that affect the, the rails, the internal magazine system in this. And now I've got a, a can of uh, plastic primer, I'm gonna spray it up, leave it overnight, and tomorrow I'm gonna add the color. Okay, so as you can see, I've finished priming uh, these parts of the blaster. Now I'm gonna spray in black, just this stuff. It's a little bit more hard wearing than your average plastic spray paint. Um, and let's face it, blasters, they take a bit of a battering, don't they? So I'm just gonna give it a few light coats of this stuff. This is the plunger tube. Um, as you can see, it's got a bit of dead space in there, which they always have, and the uh, seal. It's a little bit loose, so I'm gonna fill the dead space with some hot glue, and then uh, just raise up this rim here using some tape. So this is the finished paint job. Um, I originally intended to try dyeing the plastic uh, using RIT dye and acetone. However, it wasn't terribly successful, so I went back to the tried and tested method of just using sanded old paint. So this is me pulling off the masking tape. Um, I left a clear section here on this uh, top cover, just so I can still see uh, into the internal magazine to check uh, ammo levels and be able to see when stoppages occur and such like. Uh, this, this orange section won't be visible uh, once it's all back together come on this masking tape is quite fiddly For health and safety reasons, I left a little bit of orange 
visible on the on the muzzle. Well, really, it's a faux muzzle because the uh, the Nerf dart actually uh, fires out from what looks like it should be um, the magazine tube for the shotgun shells. We end up with what is essentially a, a fake muzzle right there, and that's what looks like the magazine tube for the shotgun. Oh, no, that was me. I was out, but it works. Um, I put in the Mega Magnus spring, but not the enhanced Mega Magnus spring. So it's, it's getting better performance. It's not amazing. Finished the shotgun with a few accents and a little tip of the hat too my favourite Aliens movie. I'm quite happy with the final performance. I changed the spring that we had. It was going to be a the Dark Blasters long strike spring. In fact, we ended up using the Dark Blasters Mega Magnus uh, performance upgrade spring. And uh, it's actually quite punchy now. 